بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی دا نارملائزیشن اٹ از اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک آف ڈیٹا بیسز سو لیٹ اسٹارٹ ود دا نارملائزیشن ان فیکٹ نارملائزی بفور نارملائزیشن وی ہیو پرفارم ٹو اسٹیپس آف لاجیکل ڈیٹا ماڈل ون از ریپرزینٹ اینٹیٹی کلاسز in which we converted each entity class into a table. The next one was the represent entity, entity relationship in which we used the foreign keys and the new tables to relate the tables with each other. So now when the tables are created and their foreign keys and new tables have been implemented, now we will go for the normalization. So now let's check what is normalization. As in the last class, you have seen that we have normally few anomalies in a table. There is, if there is a table and I want to insert some data in it, but there is some issue, some problem to insert the data that is known as insertion anomaly. If we try to modify the data and face some problem that is modification anomaly, if we want to delete the data and again there is some inconsistency, there is some error, that is deletion anomaly. So a table may have the anomalies in it. So in fact, that table that has the anomalies, in fact, can be uh, dangerous for the database in that term that it will be redundant, it will not be allowing us to insert the data or delete the data. So what we do, we normalize the table. That means, in fact, the table with the anomaly is converted into table that has no anomaly in it. You can easily insert the data, modify the data and delete the data. So now the definition of normalization is, it is a step-by-step -step process in which we convert a complex data structure. What is complex data structure? A table with the anomalies, right? The difficulty to insert data, modify and delete data into a simple data structure. And what is a simple data structure? A well-structured relation, a relation that has no anomalies in it. So this is a process that would be step by step and we will convert the table into another form, another table and that would not have the anomalies in it. So now ch let's check about those step by step processes. So in fact we have a concept of normal form. So whenever we apply some rules on a table, the normalization rule and it gets a new shape, a new form. Then we say that it is the first normal form, second normal form. So whenever we apply the rules, it changes the shape. So now let's talk about the definition. State or shape or form of a table, state of a table, shape of a table or form of a table after rules of normalization is are applied on it. When we apply the rule, then in fact that new form is known as normal form. So let's check. If we have a table and I apply the first rule of normalization and then I will get the new form of the table, the new shape of the table, then it would be known as 1NF. Then if we will apply the rule, second rule of normalization, it will go into the 2NF. Similarly, third rule of normalization, 3NF. But after 3NF, we do not have directly the 4NF. We have another form that is Boyce chord normal form, BCNF. And when we apply after BCNF the fourth rule of normalization, we get the table in another form that is known as fourth normal form. And then we apply the rule for 5NF and get the table in fifth normal form. So now this is a step by step process in which we take a table that has the anomalies, we apply the rules, and the table changes its shape, its form. And ultimately, we get a table or number of tables that have no anomalies in those, right? So let's start with the first normal form. So in fact, this is first normal form. A relation is said to be in first normal form if it has no repeating group in it. That means if we take a table and it has the repeating group in it, the multi-valued attributes in it, then it would not be a then it would not be in first normal form. So let's start with, I will take a table and it, I will check for the repeating group. And if there are repeating groups, I will remove the repeating groups. And then that table will 
be in one normal form, your first normal form, right? 1 in F. This is the example. We have a table with reg number, name, class, course code, course title, credit hours, and grade. If I ask you for reg number 1, for reg number 1, how many names can I have? So you may see that this is the primary key and I have make these red because they in primary key we cannot have a duplicate value so in fact it is wrong but I want to show the repeating group so when I give you reg number one you give me only one name Abdullah you give me only one class BSCSAT but you give me you cannot give me the course code sir there are so many course codes so I don't know which one to give you so one has the 242 one has the 244 so this course code is a multi-valued attribute similarly when I check for the number one sir I cannot give you the course title why not sir there is IDS there is Java right so sir this is difficult course title again is a multi-valued attribute I cannot give you the grade so now check this course code has the multiple values for a single primary key value this title has the multiple values for the single primary key value and same is with the credit hours. So in fact these are multi-valued attributes and we have studied that when multi-valued attribute attributes have some logical relationship they are these are known as a repeating group. So in fact this is a group right repeating group. So that means this table has repeating group in it. So as per definition this group is not in 1NF because it has repeating group. We said it must not have any repeating group. So now check as this relation has a repeating group in it. So it is not in 1NF. So now we will move toward the solution. So now check how to remove the repeating group. Try to make a composite primary key to remove repeating group. How? Check. I take the prime in the previous slide we had only reg number as the primary key. So now I will try to combine two or more columns or attributes to make a composite primary key. So let's start with the wrong selection. I select the right number and the name as the composite primary key and I ask you to tell me the course title of one Abdullah. When you go towards this point you will find that one Abdullah has IDS and Java. Again the same problem four and three. So you will say that sir, this cannot be the composite primary key. Then I say that okay fine, let's go with the class. So I will make a composite primary key, right number in class, 1 and BSCS 18. When you go here, no sir, 242, 244, IDS, Java, 4. Sir, the again this combination 1 and BSCS 18, 1 and BSCS 18, we are getting the multiple values. So I check with right number in course code, 1 and 242. Now when I, when I say 1 and 2, 4, 2, 1 and 2, 4, 4, then you can give me exactly one value of the course title, one value of the credit R. So that means this combination in fact is a composite primary key that can give us a single value that can identify a unique value for the whole row. So when I give you 1, 2, 4, 2, you can give me a single title, single credit R. So now when we make this composite primary key, it becomes or it comes into a form that is known as first normal form. So the concept was try to make a composite primary key to remove the repeating group. So we have made a composite primary key. So now it is not it not so now it is it does not have any repeating group in it. So it is in first normal form. As this relation does not have any repeating group in it so it is in one of so again I just revise that if we have a table and it has multi-valued attributes or a repeating group we try to make a composite primary key so that we get a unique value for each and every column each and every attribute so if that composite key is working and there is no repeating group then that table would be in the first normal. Hope that you will understand that. In the next class, we will meet with the second normal form. Till then, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.